Hello, I'm Captain Tim Bloom, Command and Control. It's been nearly a year since the Incident Radio Communications Plan was first introduced. The IRCP has provided the on-scene commander with a new set of tools to more effectively manage the fire ground. Many of you have asked, why doesn't dispatch provide a comm plan on wildland incidents at the initial dispatch? Dispatch recently implemented a change to address this. Wildland Communication Plans, or WCPs, are now assigned within two minutes of dispatch. No longer will there be delays in the assignment of the wildland comm plan. No longer will you be required to name the incident before getting the WCP. The development of enhanced mapping technology and in-house geofile personnel allow us to better determine the jurisdictional responsibility based on a fire's location. What else is changing? Beginning June 1st, all wildland comm plans, department-wide, will be assigned a VHF command channel. I'm sure the obvious question is, why? For starters, because VHF radio waves travel further outdoors. VHF simply works better in the brush. The California Master Mutual Aid Agreement and Firescope both mandate all wildland agencies to operate on VHF frequencies for extended attack fires. In addition, state and federal air assets only operate on VHF. North Ops personnel have been utilizing VHF command for two brush seasons now in a pilot program. For our East and Central Ops personnel, this may seem like a big change. However, all of our mutual threat zone communication plans, such as Solar or Susanna, Foothill, have utilized VHF command for several years. There are a few items that you need to know with this enhancement. First, once on scene, company and battalion commanders will need to validate the fire's location in relation to local, state, or federal responsibility areas. Also, for potential cost recovery purposes, incident commanders should advise command and control of any fires within a half mile of SRA. And second, the size up report you announce on the admin channel is only heard by command and control. If you're working with other agencies within a mutual threat zone or initial action zone, consider repeating your size up on your assigned command channel. Many of you, I'm sure, remember the white radio days when VHF was a direct frequency. In 2010, with the purchase of LACV1 through LACV5, the department began to build a VHF system with the ability to repeat those frequencies. So just like your UHF radio, the VHF command channels work in both repeat and direct modes. The final build-out of the VHF system will give us the ability to simulcast each VHF command channel. This is similar to how the UHF radio system operates. On the UHF system, when you key the mic, all 13 repeater sites open up and transmit at the same time. The VHF radio system will have this same capability in the near future. But in the meantime, we currently lock down the repeater that carries the strongest signal. We're going to select and lock down whichever repeater works best. But it takes some manual tweaking. If your incident communications are not optimal, contact us at Command and Control on either your admin channel or via cell phone as soon as possible and let us know. Knowing that VHF Command, LACV1 through LACV5 are designed to operate in repeat mode, always check your HT and your rig radio and make sure you have selected the repeater option to optimize communications. On some occasions, you may find that you are in a line of sight with a resource and yet you can't hail them in repeat mode. If this occurs, switch over to direct mode and try again. Also, until we can simulcast these command frequencies, LA Dispatch may not hear your transmissions on VHF command. Anytime you have traffic for LA, use your assigned admin channel. As we approach the use of VHF for both command and tactical radio operations, radio dexterity is more crucial than ever. I encourage you to reach out to personnel in North Operations who have been operating on VHF command for over two seasons now and discuss with them their best practices. Continually drill with and manipulate your mobile and portable radios. Make radio use second nature. Bring your radios to morning lineup. Practice with your crew. Click on the links we have provided regarding how to empty and build a scan list and how to toggle between channels. As always, if you have any questions regarding command control, give us a call. Thanks for training with us. Stay safe.